Hey everyone, this is Steve from Commercial Forest Products and you're just in time for today's two minute tone wood talk. Today's topic, why I hate koa wood. Now the first reason why I don't like koa is the branding of koa. Koa has done a great job of branding itself as a very uh, premium exclusive hardwood. When I say poplar, what goes through your mind? Nothing. That's because poplar is a boring wood and it, there's no branding to poplar. You don't think about anything. It's uh, poplar. On the other hand, when you think of koa, you think of ukuleles, you think of uh, being on the beach, being in Hawaii. Uh, people love koa. The problem is that this branding, it makes it very difficult to actually buy koa. Um, there's a certain amount of arrogance that comes from uh, uh, suppliers that uh, deal heavily in koa. Um, there's not a lot of it out there. It's almost like the soup Nazi in Seinfeld. Um, you should just approach with your head bowed down and, and accept what you're given and then be thankful that you got it. But I hate buying wood like that, so I don't buy too much of it. The second thing I don't like about koa is the price. It is an expensive wood. If you go out to buy koa, um, you're probably looking at pricing anywhere from $75 a board foot to maybe $300 a board foot, depending on how nice and figured it is. The problem is that when people pay those kind of prices for any kind of wood, they're expecting clear, perfect wood and koa does not come clear and perfect. Actually, the grading on it is pretty poor if you ask me. The third problem I have with koa is the way it's produced. Um, a lot of times we get boards in that uh, you never see with red oak or hard maple or any domestically um, uh, produced uh, U.S. hardwood on the continental U.S. anyway. Um, but you know, with koa, we get boards with wany edges, um, punkiness, splits, just uneven ends. And of course, because of the price of it, you're charged for every square inch. When you pay that much for wood, you're expecting usable product. Like no one wants any waste and that can make it really difficult. And to add another thing to my list of gripes, if you noticed uh, the links on some of this material is, you know, four feet, but you know, four feet with a defect in it, nine times out of 10, that's a two common board. Um, you would tell your COA supplier that uh, you've got some two common COA, uh, good luck with that. It's pretty much the soup Nazi thing. You take it or leave it. And that's, Another reason why I do not like dealing in koa, but I do because our customers ask for it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now these are actually two really nice boards of koa, about five quarter thick, and they're about eight inches wide, uh, eight inches, maybe 10 inches on the other one. But let me just focus in on the end here. Like, like, like what is this? Like, how did this happen? It looks like someone took an ax to it and uh, it chipped off. So what are we supposed to do with this piece? I mean, uh, you know, anybody that we send this board to, they're not gonna wanna pay for this end. But you know, other than that, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, eight inch wide koa board. Now you look at the same thing on this, this one. It's, it's produced like a fence post. Now, this is a really nice board. This one's about 10 inches wide, good color. Um, mostly heartwood, kind of interesting grain, but, but you get to the end and, and you've got a triangle here. You know, it's just uh, it's just sloppiness, and we see this a lot in koa. And this is by far not the worst example. Just flipped over that eight-inch board, so I'm gonna get it from the other other side. You know, okay. So it's got a gouge missing out of the top, but other than that, it looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, until we get all the way to the bottom, and then there's a big. It's not wane. I don't even know what that is, but you know, it's a defect you'd never see in in red oak or maple. Um, but you know, it's koa, so go ahead and leave it in there and ship it but it presents a problem to anyone trying to sell koa because essentially no one wants to pay for that, that piece. And, and I don't like trying to pass it on to people who don't want to pay for it, but I'm not going to get stuck with it either. If this was a, uh, let's say a hard maple board, you know, this would probably be a, a two common board based on the top, the bottom, and the cutting units in between. Now I admire a figured piece of koa just as much as the next woodworker, but as from a, a wood marketing standpoint, I just as soon deal with almost any other species. You can have your koa. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hardwood insights.